But today I want to talk to you about your fitness. I want to talk to you about fitness. And I want to ask this specific question. Here it is. Here is this specific question. Does God care about our physical health? The question, does God care about our physical health? Guys, I, I, I don't, I'm not just greatly experienced. Somebody else could come up and share this message with you. But I do know what the Word of God says about the body. And we're going to be looking at that today. Does God care about the physical health? Let's start off in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. Look what it says. The Bible says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. Other translations say entirely, entirely. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you entirely. May your whole, watch this, watch this, watch this. May your whole spirit, soul, and May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey guys, throw that graphic up there if you will. I want you to see today that our body, our body is made up of basically, or not our body, our being, our being is made up of basically three different parts. You've got the body, you've got the soul, and you've got the spirit. And it's very important that we understand the body, the soul, and the spirit. Now we know what the body is. The body is what you see. Oftentimes you'll go to a funeral service and there's a casket at the at, at the front and they give you a time to view and sometimes they open the casket it's an open casket so you can walk by and sometimes people will walk by and oh oh like he's there or she's there they're not there ladies and gentlemen listen to me listen to me the body all the body does is carry around the soul and the spirit this this what you see is not who i am thank god this, what you see when you look in the mirror, is not really you. It's a part of you, but it's not, not really you. Now, when we think about the body, we think about five senses. What are they? Well, we know that we have the sense of sight, taste, and um, smell, and hearing, and, of course, touch. The body. And then you got the soul. The word soul in the Greek means suke. It's the word suke. We get our word psyche from it. So when we think about the soul, what are we talking about? We're talking about the mind. We're talking about the emotions and the will. It's the psychological realm of, of who we are. And that's the reason uh, the 31st, I've got my friend Dr. Pepper Pratt coming to share with you about soul care because the soul is suke. It is the psyche. It is who we are, our mind, our emotions. And many of us have these things that we deal with in our mind and our emotions. And so our, our being is made up of the body, the soul, and the spirit. Now, the spirit is really what is interesting. Oftentimes in the Bible, uh, soul and spirit are used interchangeably, if you will. But when you get down to it and you look at it closely and you, you really study the words, the, the, spirits, the word spirit is the way that we connect with God. We cannot connect with God outside of the spirit. We need the spirit man. That's what connects us to God. As a matter of fact, it's, the, it's only used if we trust Jesus as our Savior. If we give our life to Christ, we are using then the Spirit, the Spirit. Some people say sometimes, uh, and you probably said this, I've probably said it, we've probably all said it, I can't be there, but I'll be there in Spirit. Well, let me just say, guys, are you ready? That's impossible. So next time we say that, just kind of look at you, I just lied. There, there's no way you can be there in spirit. Why? Because your body, your body carries your soul, who you are, your inner man, your spirit with you. That's what gets you to where you are going. So today we're going we're gonna to kind of key in on, we're going to target what does the Bible say about the body, the body. Now, there are really two basic unhealthy uh, attitudes that we can have about the body. One unhealthy attitude is that we can, uh, we, we can say, I want to perfect it. 
In other words, what we're basically saying is that it's never good enough. It's never good enough. It's never good enough. And it almost comes to the place where we begin to worship the body. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not to worship the body. That is idolatry. So that's one extreme. Uh, perfecting it. We don't want to perfect. That's where... Uh, really eating disorders and things like that come out of because we have looked at other people we've compared ourselves to them and by the way when you look at somebody in a magazine or on, online or whatever uh, they've been airbrushed hello are you there they don't have abs they draw them on there and so we, we look at that and we compare ourselves and, and so we're constantly striving to be perfect. And if we're not careful, then we put that before we do God. So that's one extreme. And the other extreme is what we're talking about today. And that is you can neglect your body. And so I think just uh, as much as perfecting it, neglecting it is just as wrong. So the question is simply this. Here's the question. The question is, does God really care about our physical health? Well, 3 John 1, 2 says this. 3 John 1, verse 2. So God created mankind. 3 John 1, 2. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health. That you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. He wants your soul to be well, your spirit to be well, but he's saying that he wants you to live in good health. So the question is, and I want you to answer the question for me, the question is, does God care about our physical health? Does God care about our physical health? Yes. So what does the Bible, what does the Bible say about the body i want to give you five things i want you to write these five things down real quick this is not a sermon on what to eat and how to exercise you can google that you can you know you can go get some old richard simmons videos you can put your shorty shorts on your and and whatever works for you you can low carb you can high carb you can fruit you can eat peanut butter you can do whatever you want to do don't eat peanut butter. That's probably not good for you. But you can do whatever you want to. That's not what this is about. What this is about is I want you to see the importance that God and God's word puts on the body. Number one, number one, write this down. God created our bodies. God created our bodies. Genesis 1.27 says this. The Bible says in Genesis 1.27, so God created mankind in his own image. Look at me, folks. You are, this is crazy, you are created in the image of God. And, and next time you're beating yourself up, next time you're complaining, next time I don't like the way my nose looks, I don't like the way this looks, you are created in the very image of God. It's big. In the image of God, he created them. Uh-oh, male and female. He created them. Who did he create? Male and female. Politicians, culture, look what God says. Don't worry about what man said. Don't worry about what preacher says. Look what God said. God made the male and the female. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you, men and women are different. That's the way God made us. Now, I don't know all the science behind it and all that business, but I know that, what is it, a man is an XY chromosome and a woman is a Am I getting that right? A woman is an X, X chromosome. Whatever, we different. Psalm 139, 13 and 14. For you created me in my, in my innermost parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you because I am awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. God created our bodies. God created our bodies. Now listen to me. God created everything. God created everything. He created the, man, the, 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 uh, the universe. He created the, the trees and the field and the oceans and the streams and the animals. But he also created you. He created your body. Now listen, if God cares enough to create you, your body, then we ought to care enough to take care of it. I said that God created our bodies, but also did you know that God wore a body? 
God wore a body. I mean, he came, we just went through the Christmas season. What's the Christmas season all about? It's about the birth of, of God. It's about the birth of Jesus Christ, who was God in the flesh. And we read about him uh, being born of a virgin and coming to this world, but Jesus was born. God, God was born, and he lived in a human body. John 1, 14 says this. Matter of fact, if you're reading with us through the New Testament, maybe at John 1 was yesterday. I can't remember, but the Bible says, And the Word became flesh. The Word. Now, these are all caps, but this is capitalized, W-Y, because the Word is Jesus. The Word, Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us as we saw His glory. Glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ put on a body. God created our bodies. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. If God created it, that means God cares about it. If God cares about it, then so should we. Number two, write this down. Number two, our bodies belong to God. Our bodies belong to God. My body is not my property. It's His. It doesn't, own, doesn't belong to me. I don't own my body. It belongs to God. What do you mean? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. The Bible says, Do you not know that, the, that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You're not your own. You were bought at a price. He bought your body. He belong, you belong. Let's, now, now listen, I want you to hear me what I'm saying. We got a good crowd in this service, and I know that in a crowd this size, there's no doubt that many of you have not yet come to know Christ as Savior. You've not given your life to Jesus. So I want you to understand, most of this, matter of fact, most of this message in the beginning all the way to the end is really presented to those of you that are already Christians. But hang on. If you don't know Jesus, hang on to the end because I got some good news for you as well. But here's the deal. Our bodies belong, if you're a child of God, your body belongs to God, to God. It's not yours, it's God's. It's not mine, it's God's. Now, today in our society, we've kind of done the same thing that the Greek philosophers did way back thousands of years ago. When I'm talking about the Greek philosophers, I'm talking about Aristotle and Socrates and Plato and those guys, you know. Thousands of years ago, they believed in dualism. And a, a part of dualism included the idea that, that your mind or your, your soul and your spirit were important. Remember the graph? You got the body, the soul, and the spirit. They believed that the spirit and the soul were super, super important, but the body, eh, not so much. As a matter of fact, they believed that the body was evil, so it didn't really matter what you did to it. It didn't matter if you messed it up. It didn't matter if you wore it out. It didn't matter if you didn't take care of it. It just didn't matter because the body wasn't important. Have you noticed that in the church in 2021, 2020, 2019, 20, 1985, you can go back as far as you want to, very few preachers, I don't know if you've ever heard a sermon on this subject, very few people talk about the importance of the body. Let me tell you something, friend. The body is just as much a part of you as your soul and your spirit. Why? Because your body carries your soul and your spirit everywhere it goes. But we, we don't talk about it much. We don't, we, don't, we don't deal with it. And I just want to be honest with you. I, I, want, to, I want God to get glory with my body. And, and as your pastor, I want to do better. And take better care of my body. Wise. And I'll get to this in later, but I want to live a long time so I can preach a long time about Jesus. Amen. And so so I, I want to tell you, as your pastor, I want to do the very best that I can with my body to take care of it and live as healthy as I possibly can. I got a lot of work to do. But I, I want to be as healthy as I can. But also as your pastor, I want you to be as healthy as as you possibly can. I want you to take care of your body as best you can, not just so you look better, not, not, not just so you'll feel better and live longer. Now, those, there's nothing wrong with that. Those are good motiva motivations. That, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look better and feel better and live longer. Nothing wrong with that. But you know why I want to take care of this body? I'll tell you why. Because it doesn't belong to me. It's on loan from God. I want to do it to glorify my Father in heaven. Number three, write this down. 
We're talking about what the Bible says about the body. Number three, God's Spirit lives in our bodies. Now, this is one of my favorite parts of the message. God's Spirit lives inside of our bodies. Now, we've already read 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and 20, but let's look at it one more time. The Bible says, do you not know that, you, that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is where? Come on, who is where? In you. Do you know that if you're a child of God, everywhere you go, guess what? The Holy Spirit of God goes with you. Wow. Look what the Bible says in another parallel passage. He says in 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 16, Don't you know that you're, you yourselves are God's uh -oh, temple? And that God's Spirit, what, dwells in your midst. Ladies and gentlemen, everywhere you go, if you're a child of God. Now, if you're, if you're not a child of God, I'm not talking to you right now, but I want you to listen closely. If you are a Christian, a Christ follower, a believer in Jesus, you put your faith in Him. Everywhere you go, guess what? God goes with you. That's pretty awesome. When you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, guess what? God is with you. When you're really going through some struggles and you don't know if you can make it another day or take one more step, guess what? God is with you. Everywhere you go, God is with you. When you need someone to comfort you and put his arms around you and hug you and pick you up and give you strength and courage to go on in life, guess what? God is with you. But also, listen closely, everywhere you go, God is with you. So, 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 because we're not perfect, we mess up, we do stuff. Somebody say stuff. We call sin everything but sin. When we, when we do stuff, when we do sin, when we rebel against God, when we think, oh, just one more time, let me just kind of step back in the old life. Let me step back into the old world. Let me just get back in here, get a little old pleasure for a moment. Guess what? You can't run from God. You can't hide God. You can't shake God off. And when I was playing football, we'd have these drills, you know, and you... You get the ball, and you run through, and you, you try to shake off the other guy and get around him. By the way, go Packers. You can't shake God off. Child of God, if, if you are born again, everywhere you go, you are bringing the presence of God with you. Man, that's a big, big thought. The Holy Spirit of God lives in you. God's Spirit lives inside of you. When you say yes to Jesus, when you trust Him, when you get saved, God puts His Spirit inside of you as a guarantee for your salvation. At that point, you become, watch this, watch this, the temple. Somebody say temple. The temple of the Holy Spirit. You become a residence of His love temple let me ask you a question next year about this time you're driving out North Highland so if you're going north on North Highland you're gonna you're gonna get out there close to this beautiful piece of property and by this time next year you're gonna look to your left and it's gonna be a little pretty building out there it's called Soul Quest Church and you're driving and you you look and you're like, oh, that's my church. And then you look again and there's some crazies with spray paint spraying graffiti all over the building. Then the next thing you, you slow down a little bit and you're like, I'm not seeing what I'm seeing, am I? And, and, and you, you look a little bit closer and then they're starting to set the place on fire. What are you going to do? <laughs> I should not I, I should not have asked Soul Quest Church that question what are you going to do? bust them up take care of some business
You're going to pull old Conor McGregor on them. You know, you don't bust. No, no. You first you go, that's a crime. I'm going to call the. See, I was going to say popo, but I thought that probably is not respectful. Y'all said it. Quit it. You're going to call the police. Now, think about it. Think about it. We do the same thing when we fail to take care of our temple. We tear it down. We destroy it. We vandalize it. Listen, the Israelites. Now, watch this real close. The Israelites went through specific, rigid rituals in taking care of the temple. You know the temple. I don't know if you've studied much about the temple, but the temple, man, it was, it was precise. It had everything in place. It was clean. It was sparkling. It was beautiful. I mean, they took care of the temple inside the temple. Why? Because inside the temple, in the inner room, and they call it the Holy of Holies, that's where the presence of God resided. And so the temple, the temple was the presence of God. That's where you went to find, the, to meet, to experience the presence of God. Now listen, you couldn't go near. The priest had to go into the Holy of Holies for you. But that's where you found God. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? The temple doesn't exist. You, 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 me, we are the temple today of the Spirit of Almighty God. And if they took care of the temple the way that they did, I want you to understand it was made of gold. It was beautiful. It was sparkling. It was perfect. But I want you to know our bodies are far more valuable than any temple made of gold. Why? Because we have been formed and made in the very image of God. So we need to take care of what God has given us. The Spirit of God lives inside of us. If you had a million dollar racehorse, I almost ask what you would do, but I know this church, I'd pawn it. Even if I could only get 250K, I, I'd be, no, what, if you had a million dollar racehorse, how would you take, I'll tell you how you take care of it. You feed it good and right. You would exercise it, you would run it, you would prepare it for the next race. Can I tell you, folks, we are far more valuable to God than a million dollar racehorse. Once again, we were and have been created in the very image of God. Christ lives inside of us. Therefore, we need to take care of the temple. And then, number four, number four, God expects us to steward our bodies. Now, that word steward means to manage or to take care of our bodies. Now, I want to just say right now, I said it earlier, I'll just repeat it. I'm no expert. I am a, no expert. I am uh, no expert. I am no expert. You can look at me and tell I am no expert. Now, I love, I, I love to exercise. I've always done it. I just like to eat too much. That's my problem. But I love exercise. I've been doing it since I was a kid because I've always, always played sports growing up, and that's just part of what you did. And now I just, I, I just I can't stop doing that. So that's not an issue for me. Now, the eating part, that's where God has been really dealing with me about that in a really big, big way. And God expects us to steward our bodies. Now, I'm not the owner of this body, but I am the caretaker of this body. It's God's body, but I'm, I'm the one responsible. I'm to manage it. I'm to take care of it. And we often, in the church today, we talk about stewarding our time, our talents, and our treasure. But very seldom do we talk about the temple. That's why we're here today. Because that's what we're talking about. You know, I, I, I've read Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, specifically Romans 12, 1. Go ahead and throw that on the screen, guys. I've read this verse. Matter of fact, when I first got saved, my pastor and my youth pastor, they just drove it into us, memorize Scripture, memorize Scripture, memorize. We need to get back to that. But, and so this was the very first verse that I ever memorized, ever. And I've read through it a thousand times, and I never really 
it never really jumped off the page at me about what I'm about to share with you until this past week. Look what it says. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your soul, to offer your spirit. Whoa. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. What is he saying in this passage? Taking care of your temple that God has given you to manage. Taking care of your temple that God has given you to, to be the caretaker of. Listen to me. When you do take care of the temple, it is, watch this. Have you ever thought about it? It is an act of worship. I mean, we want to take care of the mind. We want to take care of the emotions. We want to really take care of the inner spiritual man. But we sometimes forget about the body. Romans 12, 1 says to take care of the body. And when you do, and as you do, you're worshiping King Jesus. Wow, that's pretty strong. What are some benefits of taking care of the temple? Well, when you exercise, I don't know a lot about it, but I know some about it and i've learned a lot this week by talking to some of my friends by the way didn't y'all see our videos this week if you haven't seen them go back and look at those even my brother mark on the front row <clears throat> came through for me last night learned some stuff from him last night so i had to google it just to make sure he was right <laughs> he was right and i'll get there in a minute but but exercise exercise number one reduces stress anybody been stressed when you stress you need to run. Exercise reduces stress. Now, I don't have to tell you, but we are living in a day, and thanks to 2020, we are seeing more depression and anxiety than maybe we've ever seen. Not just in our country, but around the world. Sometimes we think that this, is a, this pandemic is something that's just in America. No, it's all over the world. All over the world. And, and anxiety and depression ha has risen to new heights. As a matter of fact, matter of fact, if you ask a pharmacist, an idea because my son-in-law is, or he's almost one anyway, but I asked him and I said, look, and, and, and they're, they're prescribing more and more and more and more and more medicine for these things. It's at an all-time high. And because of that, suicide has elevated like crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are... We are super stressed. And exercise reduces stress. Now, what it does is what I learned from Mark. It's the word endorphins. Isn't that a cool word? Somebody say it with me. Endorphins. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say endorphins. Say, you didn't know I knew about endorphins. When you exercise, you release endorphins, which act as a natural painkiller. They help you sleep, and it reduces fatigue and in because of all of that it reduces it squashes the stress in your life exercise reduces stress but also fitness fitness increases longevity increases longevity let me ask you a question do you want to be around for your loved ones and possibly your grandchildren and your, and your great grandchildren as long as you possibly can of course you do we all do of course we do. Now, I know what some of you are thinking right now. I know, I know, I know what some of you are thinking. But, Pastor, I got a 98-year-old uncle. We call him Bud. Dude smokes five packs of cigarettes a day. Eats fried chicken every day and five scrambled eggs with a Velveeta cheese mixed in every single morning. Well, Uncle Bud is an outlier uncle bud is not the norm what's the norm well every study shows that people who are sedentary have a greater risk of hypertension high blood pressure diabetes stroke heart disease and I can the list goes on and on those who take care of their bodies have a lower heart rate and they live longer on the average and for me let me just I'll make things personal 
for me. For me. I said last week or week before, week, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I said, I'm going to preach. Remember that? You're going to have to rip the microphone out of my hand. I want to preach as long as I can. But I won't be up here rambling. I want to take care of myself the very best of my ability. I want to preach as long as I can. Why? So I can continue to tell you and everybody that I come in contact with and all of Jackson and West Tennessee and America and the world that God loves you, that Jesus died for you, that he came up out of the grave the third day, and you can be saved. I want to live. I, I, I'm ready to die. I'm ready. But I want to live as long as I can. Get the message of Christ out. You see, exercise helps with longevity. Well, it also reduces the risk of cancer. You can read about all this stuff. You probably heard all this. Colon cancer, breast cancer, uterine cancer, lung cancer. All of these things are reduced when you take care of your temple. There's one last thing I want you to see talking about the body what does the Bible have to say about the body it says last but not least God will we just sang about this God will resurrect our bodies after we die look what the Bible says in 1st Corinthians 6 14 by his power God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also the body God will resurrect our bodies after we die God, God never wastes anything right now child of God I'm talking to children of God Christ followers right now child of God you're, you're living in version 1.0 1 1.0 some of you thought, well, I thought I was a 10. See, you, you got problems already. You need to be back to 31st. That's not what I'm talking about. You're living right now in version 1.0, but when you get your brand new body, and you will as a child of God, you're going to be in version 2.0. You see, right now we're in version 1.0, but you will get your new body. What will it look like? Well, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure, but I know it's going to be a whole lot better than this one. And I'm going to welcome it. I'm going to welcome the new body, aren't you? Somebody say amen. I'm going to welcome it. I mean, now we got bodies, you know, I got this weird shaped body. You know, my wife makes fun of me. She said, where'd your butt go? I said, right here. You know, you know, I got two little skinny legs, little big butt. Big old belly, big broads. You know, I'm, I'm messed up. But when I get 2.0, I'm going to look good. When you get 2.0, guess what? You're going to look good. So what, what is 2.0 going to look? I don't know, but it's going to be a whole lot better than what we got right now. Thank God. Somebody say, thank God. We, we do have a clue. Actually, in the... Bible we have two clues when Jesus came up out of the tomb uh, the Bible says he walked around Jerusalem for about 40 days after his resurrection during that time he saw multiple time multiple groups of people different times including one event where he 500 plus people saw him and what's interesting is they recognized him now he wasn't in 1.0 he was in 2.0 he was in 1.0 before he died and then after he rose again now he's in 2.0 he's in the newest version by the way let me tell you some of y'all some of y'all trying to trying to bypass the 1.0 and go ahead and jump to the 2.0 into 1.0 i know because i've seen it y'all done downloaded that app some of you ain't laughing you, you the ones you the one doing it you know that app you download and, 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 and you put your face in front of it and it makes you look better than you really look? You know I wanted, you know, you know it airbrushes your face, it takes all your wrinkles out, it sucks you. Put your, 
I'm like, who is that? They come to Soul Quest. I never say, and, oh, that's who. Well. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know. So, 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 so anyway, you, some of y'all are trying to j- jump ahead, but we are going to get a 2.0 version. And it's going to be good, 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 good. It's going to be good. So we got one clue, Jesus. Watch this, Jesus. Jesus gives us the first clue. And then, if you remember, Jesus took his crew, his posse. You know, I'm talking about the three amigos, you know, Peter, James, and John up on the mountain with him. And when they got up on the mountain, they saw these two guys that were in version 2.0. It was Moses and Elijah. They came back, and now they are in this new body. And the Bible says that, 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 that Peter, James, and John, they didn't have to say, Hey, Jesus, who are those guys? You know what they said? They said, Hey, there's Moses and Elijah. They recognized him. But they were in a brand new body. A brand new new body have i read first corinthians 6 14 yet let me give you another verse by his power i did read it god raised the lord from the dead and he will raise us also i'm not going to read this because of time but i want you to write it down first corinthians 15 42 through 53 it gives you more detail about this very subject how we're going to also be resurrected we're going to also be resurrected Ladies and gentlemen, there's one big difference between version 1.0 and version 2.0. Version 2.0 is going to be perfect. Version 2.0, glorified bodies. They are going to be perfect without blemish, without pain, without sorrow. They will be perfect. But until that time, we don't got to be perfect because if we're in danger of worshiping our bodies but god said the body is important you know some of us need a fresh start with a mindset of how important the body is why Acts 1 8 but you shall receive power after the holy spirit of god has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses ladies and gentlemen because of acts 1 8 and because of pentecost the spirit of almighty god has come down and and before jesus was in their presence but guess what jesus couldn't be in their presence any longer so when he ascended the spirit of god descended and he came into the hearts and lives of every single child of god everywhere we go the spirit of god goes with us lives inside of us he lives inside of us so the body carries suke psyche the soul mind emotions and the spirit how we connect with God the body carries why do I want to take care of the body because the body is important to carry the others around so that we can do what Acts 1 8 says going to all the world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth to preach Jesus. I close with this. I said earlier that this message, predominantly the whole message really, was really geared. Madison, make your way on up if you don't mind. Was geared to the child of God. Because the child of God has the Spirit of God living inside of them therefore we are the temple of the Holy Spirit how do we become the temple of the Holy Spirit there was a time and a place in our life where we said Jesus come into my life and save me at that moment the Spirit of God moved in my residence inside of our temple now the question I have for you today is this Have you invited Jesus to be the Lord of your life? Have you invited the presence of God to come and live inside of you? This morning in the first service, we had one that invited Jesus to come into the life. And the Spirit of God came and made residence in her being. See, where's the Holy Spirit of God right now, Ronnie? Well, He's in my heart. He's with me. 
If you're a child of God, He's with you. But if you're not a child of God, He wants to be in you. And He wants to be with you. Come on, folks. Life's hard. Life's hard. If you don't have the Spirit of God in you, listen, it's hard either way if you're a Christian or not a Christian. Life's tough. Things happen. In 2020, so many people struggled. Even Christians struggle. I'm not saying Christians don't struggle. We do. But ultimately, we have the Spirit of God inside of us to help us through those difficult times. But if you're here today and you've never asked Christ into your life, sir, ma'am, young person, mom and dad, teenager, grandparent, whoever you are, if you've never asked Christ into your life, if you're watching live right now, listen to me. You can become the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. You can become the Holy of Holies. You can become the temple right now for the presence of God in your life. So that when you struggle and you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you're never by yourself. Never by yourself. He's always there with you. Always, always, always. Even when you're alone, you're never alone when Jesus lives in your heart. Have you ever asked him to save you today? Have you? Have you? If you haven't, you can today. I want to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching today. We want to encourage you to go down and subscribe. Also, we want to ask you to prayerfully consider partnering with us to help us do whatever it takes to reach people far from God and to help them take their next step towards spiritual maturity. Listen guys, once again, thanks for watching today. And you can find out more about SoulQuest Church at soulquestchurch.com.